Welcome back to On the Mic of Mike, the premier business radio program around. I'm your host, Mike King. Appreciate you being here with me. The views expressed here of mine have no connection to support of agreement with any other host. Information or ads on the station. I don't work for this station. My program just airs here on a daily basis. So join me as this cutting edge show. We uplift the community and showcase RVA in a different way. The sound you're listening to are emanating from the Mike King Biz Studio, which is the global epicenter of ed social enterprise business. You can follow me on social platforms, hashtag on the Mike Mike, as well as Mike King Biz. I always say we get the best and the brightest out there. Today we brought in the legal eagle out there, you know. Oh, we, we introduce you to the best and the brightest because there's a lot of folks doing some great things out there. So, Counselor, welcome to the program. As I always say, it's a business show. So tell us who you are and what you do. Hi. Thank you, Mike, again for having me. My name is Ray Cousins. I am an attorney here in the city of Richmond. I work for Brown Greer PLC, which is located on Rockets Landing. And we specialize in mass claims administration. Um, so we administer large class action settlements. Examples of some of the programs that we work on, um, we're currently working on the NFL concussion settlement. And then I personally am working on the PG&E Fire Victim Trust, um, which is a bankruptcy trust that arose to pay victims of the California wildfires that happened in 2015, 2017, and 2018. All right, counselor, I am not a legal eagle. What's the draw to that part of it? You know, when we look at that, you know what I think of? Aaron Brockovich. I mm -hmm. mean, in, in reality, because we don't know, we see courtrooms and we see criminal defense attorneys and we see uh, people out there with personal injury lawyers. It's a very interesting one since this is a business show. How do you get steered to that type of law? So it's a pretty niche practice. I graduated from Howard University School of Law in 2010. And at that time, um, you know, we were just coming off of the housing crisis of 2008 and the recession. Um, and so Brown Greer was working on the oil spill at that time, and they were hiring attorneys to help with that project. And so that's when I joined the firm. Um, so we actually have a very niche practice in that when the plaintiff's attorneys and defense attorneys actually reach a settlement, we come in and we help them administer that settlement. Um, so our founders, co-founders, uh, Lynn Greer and Oren Brown, they recognized a need for, they worked on the Dalcon Shield um, settlement back in 2002, and they recognized a need to uh, make the process for people to file claims a little bit more efficient. And so that's what they did. So we have our own programming team in house and we're responsible for setting up, you know, all of the systems and databases that are needed to run a successful program, claims program. One of my, my great cousins is here. She is an attorney. And so one of the things that when we look at, at class action suits, like you see them come up, I see the one that's on TV now about the Marine Corps, that if you were in, you know, Camp Lejeune from this point to this point, give us a call. Does that really work? Do people really respond to things like that? Yes, it seems to work. Um, you know, for each of our programs, we have uh, thousands of claimants who submit claims, and there are a pretty, uh, you know, good sizable population of law firms who represent those attorneys or who represent those claimants. And so, yes, the marketing that law firms are doing, that these personal injury law firms are doing, um, definitely results in, you know, now granted, they will take a cut based on whatever retention, retainer agreement a uh, claimant signs with them. Um, but it does work. That marketing works for sure. 
One of the things that, so now you, you did touch on something, like the understanding when they say lawyer, that lawyer took, you know, they took a chunk of my money. And people don't realize that the law firm laid out the money before the money came in. Let's talk a little bit about that process, because I think people really don't understand what it takes uh, for uh, whether it's not a legal battle, it, it is sort of a battle, but it's a process that the law firm lays things out in the beginning without having the money there. So could you talk about that for a second? Sure. Well, at least I can speak about it in terms of our, you know, our program. So, you know, my understanding, and granted, we're on the back end of this, but my understanding of what personal injury attorneys in this class action space do is they find clients and then they, uh, you know, who've been harmed by, let's say, a pharmaceutical drug, because we work on a lot of pharmaceutical drug settlements as well. Um, so a personal injury attorney will... Uh, find a client who has been harmed by a pharmaceutical drug. That client then comes in, they meet, they sign a retainer agreement. Um, these attorneys are usually, they usually have access to the settlement agreement or whatever governing document there is that indicates how much money a defendant has made available to pay each person in a settlement. And so if the attorney believes that that person has a good case and can get some money from the program, then they will work together, um, you know, to obtain whatever required documents there are. And then that attorney will file a claim on behalf of that client. There's no guarantee that that person will get money. So you're right. I mean, they don't have access to the money at that time when a retainer agreement is signed, but that attorney is operating on the, uh, you know, based on the fact that um, if their documents actually match the requirements and meet the requirements that are in a settlement agreement, then the likelihood of them getting money is pretty high. One of the things, one of my, my ESP and Richmond Natural, we are, we are the best business radio program around talking to attorney Ray Cousins, who is here talking to us about the legal profession. Ma'am, a lot of industries have been changed due to the pandemic. What did it do for you guys from a business, how you operate the business? So we had to go remotely pretty quickly, but we'd had experience doing that. When we worked on the BP oil spill case, um, we had employees all over the country, primarily in New Orleans and then along the Gulf Coast where the oil spill affected claimants and you know industries in that area. And so we already had the infrastructure set up to go remotely pretty quickly. So our transition was very seamless and I mean, I hate to say it because I know this isn't the case for a lot of people, but our uh, employee population actually, it grew during the pandemic um, because of, you know, the work that we do. Um, we had just started working on the Fire Victim Trust, um, you know, right before the pandemic. And so we hired quite a few people to continue to work on that. But that's the thing about our, and, you know, it's, I wish that there weren't, uh, you know, pharmaceutical drugs and devices or other environmental catastrophes that harm people. But that type of stuff happens every day. And, you know, I'd like to believe that we're doing some good and at least paying people who are being harmed by those things. Um, so I say that to say, you know, work is sort of always available for us because of the nature of what we do. So you you are from Richmond, correct? I am from Richmond. Yep. I grew up in Churchill. And uh, I'm fourth generation. My We still have my great grandparents' house, um, which is on Princess Anne Avenue that they purchased in the 50s, uh, shortly after they moved here from Charles City. So, so uh, big new to the area. Uh, so I came here in 2014. From 2014 to 2022, Richmond has changed a lot. It has. The tenor, the speed of Richmond, I think the business community, I can't speak to what it was before then. Uh, from a business standpoint and a community standpoint, what does Richmond look like to you now as opposed to 10, 15 years ago? And what, and all along with that, what do you think that the city could do better? So, you know, growing up here, I've definitely seen some progress and Richmond has definitely changed. Um, you know, and progress and change is good. I live currently in the north side of Richmond. 
Um, but I was in Churchill. My parents still live in Churchill. They still have a house there. And so I had a front row seat to the progress and the gentrification that happened in Churchill and the small businesses that moved in there. Um, in Northside, you know, we're experiencing the same type of thing. And I think that's happening around the city. Um, I live pretty close to the Brooklyn Park Boulevard corridor. And I will say what I'm encouraged to see on that corridor is the number of small Black businesses that are sprouting up, um, and especially, you know, Black women-owned businesses. Um, I do think that, you know, one of the things that we could change in the city is, I'm not going to shy away from saying, you know, the city, the census just came out. And so over the last 10 years, the city has definitely gotten whiter. And so, you know, the white, our demographics are starting to even out a little bit. Um, but I did, I read an article, I want to say it was a Washington Post or New York Times article that talked about how our growth, how Richmond's growth, um, you know, becoming a whiter population has been one of the more accelerated growths uh, in that space in the U.S. And so I do think that we need to take a look at that because, you know, there are Black Richmonders who have roots here who can't afford to stay in their communities in the city. And I think that is a problem. Another thing, though, is we also need to provide the economic infrastructure for Black Richmonders and community members and for everyone to do well here. Um, but I, I, you know, do think that we could, as the city, as a state, invest more um, in resources for entrepreneurship and small businesses in the Black community, because I think there is a hunger for that at this point. Um, you know, I would say a few years ago, no one was really talking, or 10 or 15 years ago, I don't think we, you know, heard as much about generational wealth or, you know, for Black uh communities and small businesses and this, you know, motivation to become entrepreneurs. I think that to me seems to be a fairly newer conversation that we're having on a more global scale. And I appreciate that. And I think we, you know, the government and our elected officials need to do more to support that and to, you know, make people feel empowered in that space. It to me, a diverse community is just, I mean, it's the best type of community for all of us. And, you know, Black people deserve to be here. Um, this We, you know, built this city. The city was built on our backs. So. One of the things, like you said, a lot of times people, gentrification happens and, and people can't afford to stay where they grew up at. And next thing you know, the area turns over. Mm -hmm. I mean, so shout out kudos to your family because I've I've heard where people came to Churchill and asked their family, oh, how long have you lived here? And they're like 50 years. Yeah. You know, and the people were exactly. new shocked. Like, wow, mm -hmm. really? You know, we we just found this place or or you know, we, we heard about it. So now we came and we we bought a property. So you see Brooklyn Park, the north side, you see that as that corridor show, shout out to Miss B's Juice Bar. Yes. And also, mm -hmm. Ruby Scoops is over there. Ruby, so, Ruby Scoops, she's a friend of the program. So, she came in when, awesome. she, when she had won. So, shout out to all. Oh, yeah, my man Bron just opened up. Over yep, there. he sure did. Yeah, the Brooklyn Park Flower Gift Shop. So it's sorry. awesome. I was in there for his soft opening. It's, yeah, he has some amazing things in there. So, I would definitely encourage people to visit. Hmm? Well, the way he does things, it, it's, it, I mean, what would you expect? Yeah, exactly. And, and so shout out to my man, Bron. Yeah. Uh, all righty, Counselor, uh, any other news you want to drop on us or, or information about you and your program or what you do? Well, I am running for the Virginia House of Delegates to represent the 79th District. Uh, that election will be next year in 2023. I'm running as a Democrat, so the Democratic primary will be in June. Um, this is a new district that arose out of the redrawing of the maps. And so it covers most of Churchill, um, parts of Northside where I live, and then also some parts of Manchester and Southside over to George With. Um, I am you know, very excited and humbled by this opportunity to raise, uh, to represent the communities that raised me. Um, you know, pretty much all of my family who's still in Richmond is in the district. And so it's just been an, an amazing um, and exciting opportunity. Um, you know, I think we had a family gathering 
this past weekend and one of my cousins mentioned, um, you know, sort of a passing of the torch within our family with the older generations get, getting tired and rightly so right with all the work they've done. <laughs> Yeah, leave it to you, young thundercat. Yeah, leave it to that's right. right. Passing the, so <laughs> pass the torch. What was the call to? And so, a lot of times, I have political people, in, and I ask them, "Where do we find the next generation of of folks who are willing to go to public service? Because to get there, the fight is hard. You know, it, it you know, everybody sees what politics are. What was your call to to public service? So my call started, I would say with, you know, with my, my parents, my mom is a retired Richmond public school teacher. My dad worked in the workforce development field for the Commonwealth of Virginia. And I just remember growing up being privy to spirited debates that my family members and my dad and his friends would have about social justice issues facing Richmond. And this was in the eighties, um, you know, during Reaganomics and like the whole crack cocaine um, epidemic in our communities. And so um, as a child, I was just always aware of issues that were, were that existed. Um, and then I, in fourth grade, watched the civil rights documentary, Eyes on the Prize, which was all about how civil rights leaders like Martin Luther King and Thurgood Marshall actually used the law to affect change. And so that's what inspired me to become an attorney. When I went to Howard University School of Law, the charge there was to be a social engineer for change. And that kind of always stuck with me. And so as I think about what's the best way for me to advocate for my community, especially when I see issues that have persisted for a very long time, like you know, low and, and low income and, and poor community members still living in public housing projects our education system, our school buildings being dilapidated and, you know, looking like kids really should not be occupying those buildings, but they are. Um, our issues with affordable housing and with creating better paying jobs and, you know, again, empowering people to pursue entrepreneurship. It's all of those things that um, are inspiring me to run. It's it's a definite desire to want to make a difference, but to also try to bring fresh and innovative ideas. You know, we've had some elected officials who've been in office for about 20 or 25 years, and I stand on their shoulders, obviously, and I'm very grateful for the work that they've done. Um, you know, but I wonder if it's it's time for us just to get some fresh, innovative, new ideas from the next generation. Alrighty, so uh, you were thinking about running, it was, you know, going around. When you made the announcement to the family, what was the what was the the reception? Um, I will say my dad was very hesitant, but I think that's only him that's just being protective. Yeah, yeah, just being protective. But everyone has just been very supportive. Um, I mean, I think, you know, I definitely do not shy away from having those same spirited discussions that I heard my dad and his friends and family members have about social justice issues. So people always know where I stand on issues. They know how passionate I am about the community. And so I think for, you know, most of my family and friends, this was just sort of the next natural step that they saw for me. All right, Counselor, uh, as we get, as we close out, let me get the top three things that you think are, are, challenges for Richmond at the moment as you go into your candidacy? So top three things, I think it's education for sure. That's always an issue. Affordable housing, the lack of an inventory, keeping people here who, who have been here for a while and want to stay here. And then third for me, I think would be jobs in the economy, just you know, getting people back on track. I know the inflation, gas prices are starting to go down, but um, the inflation in the economy has left some people, uh, you know, who are in need sort of further behind. And so what can we do to make sure that we're all thriving and achieving? One of my, my counselor, uh, Ray Cousins, is here, which is, man, we'd like to thank you for joining the program. You're going to be back again. You're going to be in studio with us as well. So good luck in your campaign. How can people find you out there? Yes. Yeah, so I have a website. It is raycousins.com. Uh, that includes my backstory, where I stand on the issues um, that are important to me. And you can also, uh, most importantly, donate and get involved. And there's a section to do both on my website.
All right, we'd like to thank you on the mic. Good mic. We'd like to thank Ray Cousins for coming in. And so, as I said, this is the best business program around. Yes. And this is our, you know, what we do is we try and combine business and life. I call it business ish show. On the mic, Mike, the best business radio program around. We'd like to thank you guys for tuning in. Mike King says. <laughs> So, counsel, so counselor, so counselor, when you come in, counselor, when you come in, that'll that'll be playing for you. So, uh, congratulations, okay, congratulations, <laughs> and good luck on on, the, on running. So, we'd thank like to thank you for coming on. Thanks. Now, take care.